Welcome to this lecture from ZBrush Character and Concept Sculpting Module 1 course. Now I've decided to do a series of videos showing little parts of my Character and Concept Sculpting Module 1 course which I've got out which you can find a link below. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that I want to show you quick things that I'm going to be doing in the course and you might decide actually you want to take this course because I go into a lot more detail over things so I'm going to do a few videos in series here and um, basically this is a model that you can see here and you can see the course key points that I've got there such as hair sculpting, sculpting base to high res, create and insert uh, brushes, micro mesh surface noise, nano mesh, curve on surface brushes, high detail projection, stitching, decoration, posing your sculpt and also rendering and a hell of a lot more so check out the link below to see the full course details and um, what you're going to get if you decide to purchase the course so these are little snippets um, another reason I'm doing it is that you can see if you like my teaching style if you like it then you might want to spend hours listening to me do the actual course which is over 180 video lectures and literally must be about 40 50 hours worth of recording so um, let's begin and the first thing we're going to cover here is curve on surface brushes okay so in this little video what we're going to do is we're going to create a um, an insert brush but we're actually going to modify its settings to make it a curve on surface brush so um, curve on surface brush will basically link up and you can use it for things like cables for chains a variety of different uses it's really cool so first of all, uh, like the last um, insert brush uh, lesson that I taught, um, I've got the receiver and I've got the insert duplicate there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to create a cylinder 3D like this and just check those levels. I want to make sure that there's quite a lot of divisions in here. Well, not too many, but enough. Um, the default setting is going to be perfect for this. And the reason I want to make sure there's resolution in there is because when it works on a curve, it will actually um, stretch. So if it hasn't got the resolution, it can be very um, weird because it hasn't got enough resolution to maybe twist around a corner or something. So I'm going to first do this. And what I also want to do is get rid of the caps on the ends because I don't want them to, I want it to actually weld to the next piece. So this bottom piece uh, will weld to this top piece when we start creating the curve. So to get rid of that, I'm going to press the Control Shift and Alt, and I'm going to drag across here, get rid of the top, and Control Shift Alt, and drag along the bottom. That way, it's cleared those. Uh, let me just clear that one as well. What's going on? Control Shift. Ah. All right. Hold on. Let me just clip back. Control Shift across here. Okay, no top and bottom. I've got no subdivision levels. It's low poly. And I'm going to go, and actually I need to make this poly mesh 3D first. Sorry. Control shift again across here. No top and bottom. No division. So I can go in now because that other piece is hidden. Control shift drag. You can see those are hidden. So control shift drag. Oh, I'll just add those little sections in as well. Control shift drag to bring that back. Okay and modify topology delete hidden so now i haven't got any top or bottom all right so we're going to do this we're going to make it an insert brush first of all so we're going to go to brush insert brush uh oh before i do that let me just rename it let me just call this uh cable brush okay so you can like the insert brush you can apply multiple you can append multiple ones so if you've got a cable brush you know you might have three cables one cable whatever you like and you can add those in there. So now we're going to add them here. I'm going to go to create insert brush to create the insert brush. And we're going to do it new. Now, of course, at this point, you can go save as and label it cable if you like. I'm not going to. If you created another version of this, you could then go to brush here. It create insert brush append and it would append up here if you want multiple versions. Then you press the M key to switch between them. Same as we did for the insert brush. So now we've got this, um, it's ready to be um, now modified here. So I'm gonna go in here and get this back. And at the moment, what we've got is this basic standard insert brush here, yeah? like something like that, which um, you know is good, but we wanna take this a stage further. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to stroke. 
I'm gonna come down to curve and we're gonna go into curve mode. Now the size of this brush will depend on the size of the brush that you've got active on the tool. So if I make this draw size a bit smaller, now I can start to draw on this surface. But what you're gonna notice is little gaps in between, okay? I wanna get rid of them because I want it to be continuous and I want these points in here to weld to each other. So to get rid of this, I can press the Alt key and drag across it like this and it will get rid of that one. So I'm gonna make some modifications to get it so that it welds nicely. So under brush, and I come down to the modifiers and under modifiers, I'm gonna turn on weld point, I'm gonna turn on stretch and I'm just gonna leave it like that. You could turn triparts off because this is not a tripart model. I'll be doing a um, tutorial on that um, in a minute. Just put you can put things on the end. So I could turn triparts off. So all I've got is weld points and I've got stretch turned on and under stroke palette I've got curve mode turned on. So let's try it now. Okay, that's looking better. So there we go. And that has actually welded those points together. Um, it's good that it's welded together because if I come to subdivide this, which I probably would for higher res and putting detail on, then I don't want it to break apart because the uh, polygons are not welded. So turning weld on can really help you. Uh, if you have a problem after you've done it, then you can go down to the topology and actually weld points there as well. Uh, where is that? Ooh. You modify, yeah, there we go, you've got weld points there. So you could weld, weld it afterwards, but if you can weld it while you're working, then it's cool. So that's it, that's that brush done. So now if I wanna change the size, I can bring the brush down, I can click on here, and you can see it's it's a bit easier to work with. Now down here also, you might wanna turn the resolution of the curve up a little bit. It can just give you a little bit more resolution. You can also set the maximum angle that this brush can go. So if I was to do something like that, then um, it's not a bad result, but you can affect the angle um, that that works as well. So like that. So there we go. So you might also notice there's no caps on the end, but it's not a big problem to just close this geometry off afterwards. I'm not gonna get into that, but it's not a problem. Another little handy tip that you can use with this curve brush is you can carry it on. If this curve is still active, if you have another tool up here, you could select it, click on it and it update. But you can also carry this on. If you look closely, when I go to the ends, you're gonna see another little line appear. And that line means you can carry on. So now I could carry this curve on and like that. Yep. And you could also go in and manipulate the curve as well in here. Um, if you've got liquid and elastic, it can also give you a little bit more. You can lock the ends and you can lock the start. So if I lock the start now and we try and kind of move this around, you oh, no, because I've got it set on that brush. I lock the start. If I do another one, yep. And now I kind of move it. You're going to see that that first bit is locked. Do you see? It doesn't move. So you've got the options in there to lock start, lock end. So you might want to lock the end and the start and just manipulate the middle of the curve if you wanted to. So another little tip to know is have a good old play around with this is if you start to draw a curve out and you want it to wrap around the whole thing because this is a sphere. So what I can do is while I'm pulling it out, when I get to the edge, I can press shift and I can drag off the model and now you're going to get this go around the whole model. So now when I release it, it would have created that band like that. So when you're finished with all this stuff, you can then come in and split this geometry away. Control Shift Alt and Control Shift Drag. And then I can go into our, um, let's turn that off. I can go into Geometry, Modify Geometry, Delete Hidden. And now you have those curves on their own which of course you can subdivide up. Uh, you can also go and close the holes as well. So if I click close holes, now you'll see that all the holes at the end are all sealed up. Okay, so a little bit of a course there on um, curve on surface brushes using the insert brush to convert it to a curve on surface brush. Welcome to this course, Module 1, ZBrush Concept and Detailed Character Sculpting course. 
So this module is one of a series taking you from initial design all the way to a ZBrush game ready asset with hours of video training. Now in this particular module, module one, we're gonna be concentrating on actually concept and detailing a character to get it like the course image that you're seeing in front of you now. So along the way, we're gonna be covering a host of features, including the following. Creating the base meshes, I'm gonna show you three different ways of doing that. We're gonna be building a high resolution body from the base mesh and we'll be detailing it through all of the steps. So I'll be taking it from a simple base mesh. I'll be showing you three different ways of creating those base meshes. And then we'll be actually taking one of those and detailing that model up. We'll be creating a likeness sculpt of the face. We'll be using Dynamesh and the difference between subdivided sculpts and Dynamesh. So I'll be showing you the concepts there. Be looking at um, topology tools for rigging and creating clean geometry using spotlight for reference and looking at reference in general and the importance of it we'll be looking at different methods for tiling alphas and full demonstration of those methods be creating hair fur and leather using the sculpting brushes inside of zbrush we'll also be looking at using micro mesh and nano mesh for armor and to be able to swap easily swap the micro meshes and nano meshes out to quickly give you a different effect we'll be using the surface noise and the noise maker plugin be creating complex boolean actions for subtraction and creating the u mesh from these we'll be creating insert multi mesh and curve on surface brushes both appending and adding new brushes plus saving them as well be keeping your scene organized and using references. We'll also be, when we finished detailing the high res parts, subtools, we'll be using T pose to pose our final sculpt. Now, I'll also be showing you how to use Z spheres for rigging as well, for setting Z spheres up as rigs inside of ZBrush. I'll be showing you how to save custom views and save the document as well as the tool. We will look at materials, color, and lighting as well as rendering out from ZBrush and as additional feature I'll be showing you how to bring that into Keyshot and render out from that as well and then finally we're going to end up with compositing our render passes in this case I'm going to be using Photoshop to render them in now additionally as well as all of what I've just mentioned I'll be showing you many many tips and tricks along the way so I would expect this course to be completed in about three to four weeks. Just make sure you understand each step before you move on. There's over 180 video files, so it's hours and hours and hours of content, and some of the assets are supplied to get you started. Now there's support and a Q&A area that you can post questions, because there's going to be questions. It's a very complex course. So the software that you're gonna to need to complete this course is ZBrush, I'm using version 2018. You can use 2018 or 2019. Um, for compositing, I'll be using Photoshop, but you can use something similar. Pretty much all of the packages such as GIMP, which is a free one, will allow you to set it up as well. And if you've got Keyshot, great, because I show you how to render in that as well. So as I mentioned, this is module one of many of the courses that I'm gonna be building on. So I'm gonna be using the same asset in the next module, module two, and so on, until we complete all of the modules to get us to a game ready model, which I'll be actually putting into Unity or UDK, uh, Marmoset tool bag for viewing, rendering, creating turntables. So if you're interested in game, this is module one of it, follow them all the way through. This is by far, I would say, one of the longest parts of the course, the module, because you're actually sculpting something and this is the base for what we're gonna to use to create all of the other courses from. So I really hope you enjoy this course and yeah, I look forward to seeing you on the course and um, answering your questions.